Is there a band called Endless Celestial Sex? ECS for short. Is there a channel called Endless Celestial Sex? Is this the ultimate goal of Mormonism? Is that because I know that they're trying to achieve the uh, the level of L? They want that endless celestial sex. That's what they want. Welcome to Creation Watch, where we explore the uh, many, many myriads of uh, creation and uh, universal origin ideas that deviate from the scientific norm. Uh, this is, can be religious or uh, just uh, conspiracy theories, whatever it comes down to. If they don't think that the uh, things like the Big Bang model and evolution are what got us here, I want to understand why. So that's why I started the show. Today I hit the jackpot. I talked a little bit about this channel just uh, last night with with Gurr and, and friends. Gurr, who was there? You were there. Um, was Leo there? Leo wasn't there when we were watching this. I think it was just me and you and B.S. Lewis, I think, is who we watched a couple of videos from this channel. This is a channel of John Smith. It's about as plain Jane as can be John Smith 777 if you're really interested. They have 2.94k subscribers and they just post a lot of old timey uh, Christian propaganda and uh, yeah like here's some old science videos and things like that. Now these these science videos don't actually I watched a few of them watched them into it because this one's about city of bees right it's about bees right up my alley. If I watch it it's just an old doc, old science documentary about bees. It's not anything uh anything uh religious but some of the videos might be i might have to look more into these at some point but like god's creation might be moody science videos is what these are called um but i think that they may even be this may even be poetic god's creation because they use that terminology a lot more uh flippantly back in the uh, in the early days uh because it was more common for to assume that everybody was religious just was the expectation. So God's creation was just a way to describe the natural world, right? I mean, God under God's green earth and phrases like that are still popular today because it was part of our vernacular. I don't know. I haven't watched this one, but I don't know if that's the position that they're taking. But it gets, as you move on and get past these moody science lab videos, we start to get into a little bit more, uh, <laughs> more, religious doctrine stuff so we have cartoon explaining mormonism uh is the very first video that devi deviates from this uh from this trend so that is the first one that we're gonna watch so hang on to your butts we're going to discover this is just a six and a half minute video cartoon explaining mormonism Mormonism teaches that trillions of planets scattered throughout the cosmos are ruled by countless gods who once were human like us. They say that long ago on one of these planets, to an unidentified god and one of his goddess wives, a spirit child named Elohim was conceived. This spirit child was later... I always thought his name was Kalel, but I mean, it's whichever. I, I don't even know which, uh, which version this is. It, yeah, so Krypton, we're here. We're in Krypton right now. You're born to human parents who gave him a physical body. Through obedience. Gave him a physical body. Okay, keep that in mind. A physical body is, a, is something your parents can or, can or can choose to or not to give to, yeah? To Mormon teaching and death and resurrection, he proved himself worthy and was elevated to godhood as his father before him. Mormons believe that Elohim is their heavenly father and that he lives with his many goddess wives on a planet near a mist. He has a harem. This is so remember Mormonism, polygamy is the is the thing. Polygamy is where it's at. That sound that makes sense that Kalel would be based on that, Ryan. Um actually it makes perfect sense that they would that they would choose that. Mysterious star called Korah. Here, the 
the god of Mormonism and his wives through endless celestial sex produced billions of spirit children. Is there a band called Endless Celestial Sex? ECS for short. Is there a channel called Endless Celestial Sex? Is this the ultimate goal of Mormonism? Is they because I know that they're trying to achieve the uh, the level of L. They want that endless celestial sex. Is what they want. I don't blame them. Sex is awesome, especially since I discovered full body orgasms. To decide their destiny, the head of the Mormon gods called a great heavenly council meeting. Great heavenly council meeting. It's like uh, it's like a mob boss. Both of Elohim's eldest sons were there, Lucifer and his brother Jesus. A plan was presented to build planet Earth, where the spirit children would be sent to take on mortal bodies and learn good from evil. Lucifer Gotta love that classic covering up the tasty bits, right? Uh, and for some reason, boobs too. I never understood the aversion to boobs like in, a, in real life I'd never understood that like why women had to cover their boobs up it never made sense to me but I understand that uh you know it's a culturally taboo in the western world and they want to in, uh, enforce that on the rest of us but to me I always thought it was weird understood and made his bid for becoming savior of this new world wanting the glory for himself he planned to force everyone to become gods Opposing the idea, the Mormon Jesus suggested giving man his free. Mormon Jesus looks like lit AF. I'm gonna go back and look at that face. Like, see how serious L is and how angry, uh, angry Lucifer is. Let's see here. For becoming savior of this new world, wanting the glory for himself, he plans look how to angry he is. To become gods. And then Jesus the is idea, like chill. The Mormon Jesus. He's like. Yeah. He just like smiled. Just in giving man his freedom of choice, as on other planets. The vote that followed approved the proposal of. So all the other planets have freedom of choice, and then Lucifer's like, "Yeah, not this one. We wanna, we wanna control these people." And they were okay with that. I mean, they're, 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 that proposition, they weren't like, "Okay, well, this guy's a megalomaniac. Let's let's take care of this. Uh, get, get get rid of this issue right now." The Mormon Jesus, who would become savior of the planet Earth. Enraged, Lucifer cunningly convinced one third of the spirits destined for Earth to fight with him in revolt. This is about to get like uber cringy. I apologize in advance for how cringy this is about to get. Um, avert your eyes if you must. Thus, Lucifer became the devil and his followers the demons. Sent to this world, they would forever be denied bodies of flesh and bone. Those who remained neutral in the battle were cursed to be born with black skin. This is the Mormon explanation for the Negro race. <laughs> Did you follow that? That didn't. I. I. I can't express how awful. Yeah, about to. That's why I said about to, because we're getting, we're getting ready to get to here. It doesn't get any cringier than, this is the reason for the race. Um, holy crap. So, it gets, it's, it's wor it gets worse than this. Spirits that fought most valiantly against Lucifer would be born into Mormon families on planet Earth. These would be the lighter skinned people, or white and delightsome, as the Book of Mormon describes them. Early Mormon. So, white people are the angels, the good angels, or good spirits, or whatever, that uh, came down to Earth, and then black people are the are the the neutrals, and then uh, and then the demons didn't get any bodies at all. Mormon prophets taught that Elohim and one of his goddess wives came to Earth as Adam and Eve to start the human race. Thousands of years later, Elohim, in human form, once again journeyed to Earth from the starbase Koa. This time to have. They need to play porn music over this part. Sex with the Virgin Mary in order to provide Sorry. Jesus with a visit. 
I didn't. Virgin Mary is co-opted, this time to have sex with the Virgin Mary in order to provide Jesus with a physical body. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Form an apostle, Orson Pratt. Do you see if you put porn music over that? I'm going to do that when I cut this. I'm going to cut that piece out and put porn music over it. Um, so look forward to that. It's going to be a good show. Taught that after Jesus Christ grew to manhood, he took at least three wives, Mary, Martha, and Mary Magdalene. Through these wives, the Mormon Jesus, for whom Joseph Smith claimed direct descent, supposedly fathered a number... A lot of people would claim direct descent if he fathered a lot of... I mean, look at Genghis Khan. ...number of children before he was crucified. According to the Book of Mormon, after his resurrection, Jesus came to the Americas well. to preach to the Indians, who the Mormons believe are really Israel. Yeah, this is going to get cringy here, too. More racism. I'm going to rewind this just a little bit because I wanted to give a uh, disclaimer that this is going to get racist here, too, to uh, to a different demographic. So we've been racist. We've explained why Mormonism is uh, is absolutely cringe towards, uh, towards uh, black folks. Now let's look at how they feel about Native Americans. According to the Book of Mormon, after his resurrection, Jesus came to the Americas to preach to the Indians. Who the Mormons believe are really Israelites. Thus, the Jesus of Mormonism established his church in the Americas as he had in Palestine. So you got like Roman legions, uh, uh, Roman legion age, because I'm assuming these are supposed to be bronze. It looks like bronze to me. Uh, I think it was supposed to be steel. They would have used a... Uh, a silver color palette. I think this is supposed. To, these are supposed to be Bronze Age soldiers, uh, Bronze Age Nephites versus uh, versus Copper Age uh, Native Americans, which they think are the Le Levi Levi Levites or whatever. Yeah. By the year four hundred and twenty-one A.D. The dark-skinned Indian Israelites, known as Lamanites, Lamanites, all yeah, the white Nephites in a number of great Lamanites and, and Nephites. Lamanites were the white, were the good white people in North America, and then the Lamanites were the evil, uh, dark-skinned people, which were the ancestors of Native Americans. So, just to make sure that that's clear, that we're that we're again more, uh, more more color-based discrimination here. Battle. The Nephites' records were supposedly written on golden plates and buried by Moroni, the last living Nephite in the hill Camorra. Fourteen hundred years later, a young treasure seeker named Joseph Smith, who was known for his tall tales, claimed to have uncovered these same gold. I'm okay with the rotoscoping when they're uh, when they're telling us when they're ex shedding light on this nonsense. Do it. Do it. Um, because I want to know about how this stuff came to be. I want to know how this folklore works, how this uh, mythology was, was developed. I'm glad these cartoons exist. I Obviously, I know the story from, from South Park, right? I do. And uh, Ryan, we are going to get, at, we're, we're, we're going to go uh, JW's next. So, uh Hang on, we're in for a ride. Late, ...near his home in upstate New York. He is now honored by Mormons as a prophet because he claimed to have had visions from the spirit world in which he was commanded to organize the Mormon church because all Christian creeds were an abomination. It was... See, now he's like putting down all the other Christians too, right? Joseph Smith, who originated most of these peculiar doctrines which millions today believe to be true. By maintaining a rigid code of financial and moral requirements and through performing secret temple rituals for themselves and the dead, the Latter-day Saints hope to prove their worthiness. For their self and the dead, is there some kind of ritual that they do? Where they go into the graveyard at night? That looks like people in a graveyard at night. What is this? 
What are they doing? And she's writing something down. And he's shining a flashlight on the gravestone. What are they doing here? Anybody who's fluid, uh, fluent in, uh, in, cause I, I know what, I know what, I know what these guys are doing. Oh. And I, 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 these guys with the bikes, they're out doing their proselytization. And I know this stuff, you know, what you can't do. Doing like what looks like a uh, baptism. I, I'm on board with that. I know that that's part of uh, basic Christian culture. But what the hell are these people with the flashlight in the graveyard doing? Explain it to me. Their worthiness and thus become gods. The Mormons teach that everyone must stand at the final judgment before Joseph Smith, the Mormon Jesus, and Elohim. So, like, Joseph Smith told people, he's like, you know, when you die, I'm going to be sitting up there judging you with Jesus and Elohim. So, uh, it's not going to suck itself. That was his, that was his motivation. Mm -hmm. Those Mormons who were sealed in the eternal marriage ceremony expect to become polygamous gods in the celestial kingdom, rule over other planets, and spawn new families throughout eternity. Yeah, they want to have that eternal celestial sex. That's what the whole goal is. The Mormons thank God for Joseph Smith, who claimed that he had done more for us than any other man, including... He claimed that, yeah. <laughs> it's like... Uh... That's like Moses, right? Mo Moses writing the uh, writing the Pentateuch, and he's like, "I'm the most humble man," <laughs> or Moses was the most humble man. He's writing about himself, right? <laughs> uh, it's like Donald Trump saying that 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 he's humble. Uh, Joseph Smith, you are not a humble man. In Jesus Christ, the Mormons believe that he died as a martyr, shed his blood for us, so that we too. They become gods. So that was Mormonism. Okay, that was that was the origin of um, of Mormonism as laid out in this little uh, little cartoon. There's uh, some other cartoons about this stuff too that have you know to varying degree of quality. This one, these one, the good thing about these ones is that they're just old enough that they seem like they've been around since at least the 80s, if not the 70s. Um, so I think, I think that we should be all right, uh, to share them here without having to worry about getting like copyright strikes and stuff. So who's ready to move on to the JWs? I know I got some XJ, I got at least one XJW in my chat. I think that. Who else is an XJW? I know I've got some. Where it was disintegrated I... by God. Oh, we're Total not starting destroyed. there. Witnesses. All right, here's where here's where we begin. We're beginning with this winged dude. Witnesses believe that Jesus Christ is a spirit creature, a super angel, the first creation of Jehovah God, <coughs> who prior to coming to Earth as a man existed in heaven as Michael the Archangel. Jesus started out originally as the Logos. Or Michael the Archangel. Sorry, though. Coffee went down the wrong way. Oh, goodness. Mm. I am so sorry. Let us continue. I Hold up. I didn't get to say my line. I have the power. There we go. <laughs> who then came to earth as the virgin-born son of Mary. He was a perfect, sinless man. But he was only a man, devoid of all divinity. Jesus walked the earth as a man, becoming the Christ only when he was baptized. Is that John the Baptist then? Why is he so furry? Or is he supposed to be wearing fur? I don't know if wearing fur is the best thing to do when you're going to be waded into the water, pal. Fur tends to take a little while to dry out. Jehovah's Witnesses hold the cross in contempt, feeling that it is nothing more than a pagan symbol used by apostate Christendom. Instead, 
They teach that at the completion of his ministry, Jesus died, not on the cross, but on an upright... Look how absolutely jacked they think Jesus was. Like, look at, even when he's on the cross, look at that. That's like, that's almost as, he's, he, he looks like he could fight the Korean Jesus. I think the JW Jesus could probably, um, the JW Jesus could probably go a couple rounds with Korean Jesus. Now, Korean Jesus, if you haven't seen him, he's like absolutely jacked he's like he's he's a little bit he's like bruce lee but a little bit bulkier he's absolutely roar. he's a big muscly guy so you don't want to mess with korean jesus um oh of course <clears throat> Cross, but on an upright stake. <clears throat> Christ's body was then laid in a tomb. I like how he's like mummified here, right? Like he's wrapped in bandages, even though it's very, very clear. Even though it's very, very clear that he was uh, in in the text itself that he was draped in cloth, right? In every one of the Gospels, none of them say he was wrapped up like a mummy. He was draped in two cloths, one over his body and one over his head. Why do I know this? Because I spent a lot of time debunking the Shroud of Turin and uh, the uh, some uh, nutty creationists, especially one who will not be named on this stream, uh, like to present as evidence for... Uh, for the Shroud of Turin being authentic, even though the Shroud of Turin is a single cloth, whereas Jesus had a, you know, two cloths, one over his head, one over his body. It was disintegrated by God, totally destroyed forever. Jesus was then recreated by the... Did you see the difference between see JW? Jesus comes through like a wormhole portal. Whereas uh, the Mormon Jesus was more like a particle teleporter, right? He particleized as opposed to going through the wormhole. They travel differently. The Mormon Jesus and the um, and the JW Jesus. Now, Korean Jesus, I don't even know how he travels. I, I assume he does like a flying jump kick, though. I would assume that's just how, like, if he were to, if this were a video about Korean Jesus, he'd come flying onto the screen like Liu Kang, right? Father. Before going to heaven, he materialized in different bodies on different occasions to convince his disciples and others. Okay, Ryan, uh, you're going to have to tell me which, when was Jesus, uh, in, in this religion, when, would, when did Jesus materialize as a ginger? Uh, let me know, because this ginger, this ginger version of him here is quite uh, uh, unique in, in this part of the lore. Where he shapeshifts into different people. We're going to heaven. He materialized in different bodies on. Yeah, where he's ginger, goes from being a brunette to being ginger. To convince his disciples and others that he had really been resurrected. It's the fly. Jesus returned to his. Look at that. He's like freaking. Uh, talk about Kal El, right? He's flying around like Superman in space. I guess this is to the point that they're trying to appeal. Oh, I just need sandals, though. I would have left my sandals behind. I'm sorry. Or maybe put them in my... Cause, like, Could you imagine flying through space with sandals on? Have you ever tried swimming with sandals on? You're going to lose those sandals. Uh, JW Jesus. You didn't know he came back as a ginger? You didn't get the ginger Jesus lore? Super Jesus. How fast do you think? Do you think that this Jesus can fly faster than Superman? He's got to get to... Where is he going? He's going. I guess he's going to his home planet. Um, Father in heaven. Grew wings. Well, once again, he became Michael the Archangel. He will never again be seen on the earth in visible form. But instead, rules... Watch, it, watch him get real pissed off here, though. Watch. Invisibly from the heavens when he executes judgment over the world at armageddon he will destroy all but the faith you of his witnesses die 
Yeah, he's going to drop... The He's going to drop big explosions onto major cities in the world. And he's this is the hero of the story, guys. This is Jesus doing this. You know how when the uh, when the Islamic terrorist, even though the Islamic part of it was uh, just secondary to why they were doing it, uh, when the Islamic terrorists flew their, their planes into the, the Twin Tower and how everybody mourned, well, they're going to celebrate it when Jesus does it to the entire city of New York with uh, with meteors and asteroids because he's not jesus anymore he's, he's michael he's uh, and this is this overlaps with madsonism a little bit here because i believe uh richard madson also believes that uh michael and jesus are the same i may be wrong about that though so boom See, does this guy, is this, this is the good guy? This asshole? I don't care what people believe. You don't freaking break a dam and flood their cities. You don't drop asteroids on their metropolises. They, they, they it's because they don't believe what you think they should. Who the fuck do you think you are? Sorry, I'm getting a little bit angry. Mostly because this, this is something that, uh, that, JWs, I guess, are supposed to watch and like celebrate this character. And look what he just did. Did you see those weren't those weren't like like Nazis or anything? These aren't these aren't like evil people. These are just like normal people like walking down the street. I'm like, oh crap! It's um, the city's on fire. And then boom! Ah! Holy shit! Destroyed the Christian church, so Christians aren't safe. I'm guessing Catholics. Um, so Jesus is the good guy coming in here and blowing up churches and uh, dropping bombs on cities, doing everything that Christians hate. Doing everything that, that, that uh, oh my goodness. But they, do JWs think they're Christians? I know this is supposed to be like a traditional Christian church, but uh, yeah. Good morning, Maya. Hello, hello. Thank you for joining us in the hive. Jesus, alias Michael, who will always remain invisible. Look how happy he is about that. It's like, yeah, don't fuck with me or I'll blow your kids and your cities up. To those on Earth. I'm in a mood this morning. I'm not usually this grr. Maybe it's because I was hanging out with Gurr last night and it got me this way. It's all Gurr's fault. Blame Gurr. Is Gurr even still here? I don't know. Yeah, only the Jehovah Witnesses are right. So even though you believe in him, it's not the right way. That's from uh, XJW. And can be seen only by the 144,000 select Jehovah's Witnesses who rule with him from heaven. Do you spend your entire life as a JW in anxiety about making sure you're on this list? It's like that. That's that's what everybody is like anxious about. All right. So that was um, that was the JWs and kind of their history. And then we had Mormons before that. Uh, now, we can't go ahead and move on to the uh, next topic for uh, Hive Psy, but we could also we could also learn about, and you tell me, we could also learn about Thetans. Do you guys want to learn about Thetans? This one's about 10 minutes long. <laughs> This is, I, I figured I'd give Scientology a moment in the spotlight too. This one is not complimentary of Scientology at all. So whoever made this skit here, this animation does not, it is not trying to paint Scientology in a good light, but they're telling the kind of the truth about the way that it works. Uh, but they're not going to be as neutral or complimentary as the last two cartoons were. But this is, uh, this is another one from, uh, John Smith, though. So he had these on here, and I wanted in there to explore 
uh, animations exploring these religions. This is kind of animation, more of a slideshow, but we're going to... Yeah, this is Audio Scientology. An illustrated auditing adventure by Elric Vadika. Meet Alan. He's just an average man with an average life, but what with all the confusion of these modern times, he has developed a spiritual crisis. See, right there, right off the bat, spiritual crisis loses me. I don't understand what that means. I, and I'm not being... I'm not being... Uh, facetious about it or, or dodging or whatever I am I am actually making a uh, a declaration that I don't understand what you mean when you say spiritual crisis I don't understand what you mean when you say spiritual anything I don't understand what spiritual means um, is it, uh, to me whenever anybody decide, describes uh, anything spiritual it is um, it is like a uh, it seems like a mer an emergent property of uh, of their mind and uh, their hormones, <laughs> like honestly, like that they were following uh, biological drivers. That there's nothing spiritual about it. I do want to take a moment before we move on from the slide to appreciate this frog right here, because I imagine lots of people have looked through this and watched this, whether looking at these slides or. Uh, watching these videos on this channel or another one has not taken a moment to appreciate this frog here. I appreciate you. There must be more to life than this meaningless physical world. What about spirituality and where do I fit in? Can we take also take another moment to um, admire how this gentleman looks like, like a top gun to me? What do you guys think? Does this look like a, a top gun? Hey, what's that object flying towards me? Whoosh. Why, it's me, L. Ron Hubbard, the founder of Scientology. Indeed. In this face right here, he doesn't look so much like uh, Tom Cruise, but he looks more like uh, 2D from the Gorillas. Or not, he doesn't actually look, well, he looks like, does he look, it's not 2D I'm thinking of, it's uh, the bass player, Murdoch. Yeah, Murdoch. I've returned from my intergalactic studies to help guide you across the bridge to total. I do like Reign of Fire, um, Native Atheist. Uh, it was that uh, Christian Bale and uh, Matthew McConaughey fighting dragons, cryptozoolo cryptozoological dragons too, which is the best part. Yeah, look at L. Rod Hubbard's face here. Uh, someone really goes into it. his face gets more twisted the further along we go. Freedom. How do you know I was in need of spiritual guidance? Did you read my mind or something? That I did, young Alan. All operating theodins can read minds. Operating theodins? What are you talking about, LRH? Well do you want to be an operating theodin? Because this is going to teach you how. This is going to teach you how. <laughs> well, I can't tell you too much about Scientology at this point, because then I would have to sue you. Besides, the knowledge might kill you. But I can tell you about the state of clear... I do like, uh... Forbidden knowledge that will drive you mad. Though. That's one of my favorite concepts from the Cthulhu mythos. Um, things like the blind idiot god as a thought. Maybe I should do one of these videos about the Cthulhu mythos too. Um, ooh, maybe I should just do little, little Cthulhu after this. Would you guys like to watch Little Cthulhu after this? I want to put a poll up. I'll finish watching this and if you guys want to, we'll watch Little Cthulhu. No, not a Q&A. I want to start a poll. I'm trying to use my poll feature more because people seem to like it. Uh, spell check Cthulhu. <laughs> All right, there's that choice. Now we're going to move on. Let's let him explain the state of clear to us where you obtain perfect memory recall immunity from accidents and illness a longer life and the ability to solve chest problems in a fraction of the time all this can be yours with inexpensive dianetics auditing hold on elron i don't know if i'm ready for another religion oh but alan scientology is not a religion scientology is an applied religious philosophy well if you put i think everybody who's in a everybody claims their religion is not a religion right that's that's pretty standard that way. 
So, Alan, are you ready to set sail on Scientology's fleet of freedom? Let's go. Bridge to total freedom. Here we come. Next stop, Los Angeles. Total freedom in Los All Angeles. Well, Alan, here we are. The Church of Scientology. Alan, this is Nancy. She will be your auditor, and you will henceforth be known as a pre-clear or PC, since you have not yet reached the state of clear. Okay, hi. As an auditor... If you guys are hoping to find out what the state of clear is, uh, don't hold your breath. I'm here to help improve your life by making you more able. So, Alron, what kind of scientific testing have you done to determine the effects of Scientology? Um, well, I, uh... Oh, Alan, I nearly forgot to mention that this groundbreaking auditing technology is not free. So we'll get started following. Nothing but teeth there for you, Elrod. <laughs> Payment. All right, if we'll... No, oh, stupid buffer. Come on. I'm not even making it go fast. I should make it go slow, maybe? Gnome size? Was he gnome sized? Make me more able to, and allow me to become clearer than it's worth the price. Yes. Yeah, look at that face. Alan, take hold of the E-meter cans and we shall get started. E-meter cans are literally Auditing just commences. cans. <laughs> Please tell me of a time in which you felt pain. Thank you. Well, on my 16th birthday, this one dude named Josh kicked me in the falls. Many hours go by. Please go back even further. Do you remember an earlier moment of pain? Thank you. The year is 1420. I just got stabbed by a broadsword and I fell off of my horse. Guys, I'm going to have to stop you. It looks like this Dynex auditing is not effective enough. I don't even understand what's going on. So what is auditing? Is they make you, are they trying to get you to recall your past lives? Is that the point? Perhaps Alan must advance. Alan needs Scientology auditing. After all, it is 100 times more effective. Say what? Well, it's 20 times the price of Dynetics Auditing. I suppose that maybe you can learn to be a Scientology Auditor and co-audit for a cheaper price. Hmm. Yeah, that's the, the that's what this whole thing's about, about the cost of it here, too. So keep that in mind when you're, when you're exploring the concepts of uh, Scientology. And we'll show you a brand new state-of-the-art Mark Super 7 Quantum E-Meter. If it will help me become clear and achieve all those powers you told me about, and near half the price, then it's worth it. Excellent. Two years later, please describe an earlier similar incident, thank you. It's about 2,500 years ago, and I think I'm in Egypt, and it's my birthday. The pharaoh just kicked me in the balls. Ouch. I'm growing frustrated. Did you see the Manson thing on his forehead? Oh, maybe it was just wrinkles. Did that look like, that looks like the, like the Charles Manson X on his forehead. Or cross or whatever. Just kicked me in the balls. Ouch. I'm growing frustrated. This auditing isn't working for me. I'm still getting sick. My memory is still cloudy. I get gassy when I drink milk. And my chest skills remain subpar. This is like some kind of ineffective regression therapy. Now where can you say? Looks like you need a little repair auditing. Gasp, Elrond. I forgot that you can read minds. <laughs> Look at that face. <laughs> <sighs> Fortunately, repair out didn't cost more money, but it will get you right back on track to the state of clear. Anything to help me finally go clear. Several months later, please go back further and... F His new auditor is Mark Twain. Just so you know. Mark Twain. Right here. Find a similar incident, thank you. It's many thousands of years ago. I'm a caveman and it's my birthday and another caveman just kicked me in the balls. Sorry to interrupt you guys yet again, but I sense that this repair auditing is not strong enough for you. It looks as if the full price Scientology auditing is what you need. These professional auditors will give you more benefits in an hour than you have experienced during your entire Scientology adventure. When do I start? A few weeks later, please go back further to an earlier incident of pain, <laughs> thank you. It is a long, long ago. I am some sort of hairy bipedal hominoid in a lush forest. I am clumsily holding a stick as my primitive opposable thumb lacks dexterity. It's apparently my birthday and a rival ape man just kicked me in the balls. A rival ape man. So, do Scientology, do they believe in evolution in Scientology? I thought there was more to it than that. Like there was something more to it that we were like seated here or whatever. Alan, it looks like you were mocking up your own reactive mind. Yeah, that's what I thought. Huh? 
It's time for you to test this clear cognition. Okay, I test. But why have I not gained all those fancy clear powers? In some ways, you have made progress. For instance, you are now mocking up your own reactive mindless. What about illness immunity and perfect recall? There's that suppressive talk again. All those goals and so much more await you on the operating theatin levels. Operating theatin levels. I want to get to my operating theatin level as soon as I know what a theatin is. I'm in. Alan, listen, I don't want to alarm you, but you are at risk. You must quickly advance to OT level 3. At risk, but I've already paid for Dianetics auditing, repair auditing, the expensive professional auditing, and I don't have my clear powers yet. Alan, I just read your mind again, and I should explain something. The money you've paid is going to help our religion of Scientology fund its legal battles against all of the enemies of our church, and the enemies of mankind. The enemies of the church are always the enemies of mankind, right? Religion, but didn't you say Scientology wasn't... Alan, seriously, we must advance you to OT3 immediately. To learn what Al Alan learns in OT3, please read Albrecht Vadika's Illustrated History of Scientology, available for free online. Essentially, it is the story of an alien overlord named Xenu who brings aliens to Earth and blows... Okay. Yeah, let's look at this. Essentially, look. I'll let him read blows it. them up with H-bombs, and their alien souls or theatons are crawling... Are crawling all over your body and you must remove them with telepathic auditing once they're gone you can obtain superpowers it's true as soon as it stops buffering because today my internet sucks i don't know why but it's annoying the crap out of me did i lose my signal i hope not Got my all life. over your body, and you must remove them with telepathic auditing. Once they're gone, you obtain superpowers. That's true. Uh, there's a in the description. I'll put a link to this video. Mm -hmm. You better, or else. Alan completes the expensive OT3. It's a good thing I got rid of those dang body theatins, and that Xenu was a real jerk. Why can't I leave my body and fly around the universe yet? Yeah. Mm. Alan, I obviously have the answer to that question. You're still full of the unconscious body theatins that are not able to respond to OT3 auditing. It's time for the OT4 drug rundown, and you need to stop questioning Scientology. Oh no, theatins. Yeah, you gotta you gotta wake up the these other theatins to get them out of your body too. You couldn't start with that and make sure they were all awake first. You had to get rid of the ones that were awake, and then wake up more, and then get rid of those. The it's whole like thing. OT4 purification. Purific it's a whole thing. I don't know. Um, I don't know how people actually buy into this. Um, what do what what are the uh, uh, empirical evidences, as the younger creationists would say, for a Gation full right body so thetan? Here, take these thetan begone vitamins. They'll wake up those pesky body theatins, and then you can audit them away. Must wake a theatins. When you get rid of those body theatins, we'll move on to OT5, auditing knots. But we'll need payment in advance. OT5, auditing knots is soon completed. Theatins everywhere. Now, you must move on to OT6 to get rid of those uh, rest of those body theatins. But this time, you can conveniently solo audit them away. Solo audit them? So you can use your own tele After telepathy. After numerous hours of solo auditing, OT6, 5, or 6, is eventually completed. I think I banished all of my body thetans. Yeah, I've got some bad news. You haven't banished all of your body thetans. OT7 will handle them, but you're going to have to cough up some serious cash first. Plus, we have to perform a six-month security check on you, and it ain't free. Look, his teeth got sharp. Security check time. Please tell me about any secret or criminal activity that you've engaged in, and trust me, this is strictly confidential and will Dirt on Alan. To blackmail you. Okay, if it's confidential, it wants to touch my balls and download illegal copies of movies and TV shows and... Touched balls. Uh... Alan completes OT7. Hooray, what will my final cognition be, LRH? You've done well and I've advanced farther than most Scientologists. It is time for you to move on to OT8. OT8? You'll learn who you are not and you shall eventually discover who you are. You mean my memories aren't really mine, but the memories of all those body theatins in me? 
It looks like Rodney Dangerfield's That's eyes right. there. You don't have any super OT powers because you're just a baby OT. What? <laughs> I spent in excess of $360,000 over several years to learn who I am not, and I haven't even gained my superpowers because you say that I'm just a baby OT. I've just been scammed by L. Ron Hubbard. Gotcha. Yeah, that's... That wraps it up. That How finishes out. How long after leaving out. the Church of Scientology, Alan was sued into oblivion by them. The end. Based upon the following essays, yep, there's many things the to the mysterious benefactor at xenodirectory.net for making these illustrated adventure come to life. The former Scientologists who wrote of their experiences and a very special thanks to L. Ron Hubbard for creating the one true religion. I still believe you, L. Rach. Elric Vidika, mm -hmm. 2008. So, this is a, a false... Yeah, and they're gonna... He could put some Christian stuff here. This is a false god. Religion, like please do not believe in it. It's wicked and... Your religions know no better. They just want right. your money and it's of the devil. Uh, so, please be uh, aware of their devices. Let's uh, Satan get an advantage of you. Amen. Take care. Amen and take care, he says. So that was, um, that was Body Thetans and You. And it was a follow up to our coverage of Jehovah's Witnesses and Mormons and their beliefs in cartoon format. So that last one was more of a slide than a cartoon or more like a comic strip, but I'll accept it as a. A palate cleanser before we wrap up Creation Watch. We are going to watch The Adventures of Little Cthulhu for just a little bit before we move on to our last segment of the show. So here we go. Let me get that all blowed up. And... And across the universe they go. Say so this is the, when people ask what the uh, foundation, the ultimate foundation for all reality is. Right there, Azathoth, the blind idiot god. Um, yeah, that is that is our uh, foundation, right? That's the foundation of all reality. Right. Endlessly with the pounding of vile drums, blasphemous wine, and reeds. It's too loud for little Cthulhu. Now, I don't know if I agree with that because I believe Azathoth is supposed to be sleeping. But I'll, I'll, I mean, I, I'm not sure if they're following a different route on the lore there. But it's my understanding that um, that Azathoth is asleep with the flutes and stuff playing gently to keep him asleep because if he wakes. Reality ceases to exist because the reality is part of his dream cycle. That's just my understanding, though. Finally, they get back home to Earth. Little Cthulhu wants to play more, but the stars are changing. Belay is sinking again, and it's time to go to bed. Little Cthulhu is tired from his exciting day and goes back to sleep in his house. Maybe next time the stars will be right longer and he can have even more fun. And even now, he sleeps in his house under the sea, dreaming his dark designs outside of space and time until the stars are right once more. Good night, little Cthulhu. Good night, little Cthulhu. Yeah, and there's the you know, voice, Erica Fontana, all the people involved in this right here. Give them some love. This came from uh, Zubu Child uh, is the channel. Just like to give everybody credit when I cover them. It's a cute little video. I don't think that this is the people that actually made it. I could be wrong though. Yeah, because they have the. I think I'm wrong. I think this is the people that make it because they have the uh, cafe press thing about it and everything down here where you can get the shirts and stuff. All right, so that was that was Creation Watch tonight. So thank you so much for joining me uh, this Wednesday for Creation Watch. If you are watching this, uh, watching this on Wednesday night, uh, thank you for joining me. Uh, appreciate you always uh, showing up and enjoying this for me. We had uh, started with Mormonism animation, then we went to 
JW Animation, then we had sort of a Scientology slideshow, and then we had Cthulhu Mythos Animation. It's a little bit of a palate cleanser on my on my parts. Uh, to get back to the uh, the warning that I've received, you may take it with how many, however many grains of salt you wish. That the brown acid that is circulating around us is not specifically too good. Uh, it's suggested that you do stay away from that. Of course, it's your own trip, so be my guest. But uh, please be advised that there is a warning on that one, okay?